On December 23, 2021, the Chinese government strategically restructured three large rare earth companies and created a new conglomerate controlled by the State Council of China, China Rare Earth Group Company. The Chinese official media reported it as the rare earth mothership. What is Beijing's intention behind this move? Rare earth is known as the industrial gold, a generic term for 17 metallic elements. Although it's used in large quantities, it's indispensable in many critical fields such as the defense industry, electronic information, high-end manufacturing, aerospace, and green auto manufacturing. Rare earth isn't rare in the world as the name suggests. In 2020, China had 44 million tons of rare earth deposits. Other countries such as India, Australia, the US and Vietnam had various sizes of deposits out of a total of 120 million tons of rare earth deposits globally. There may be new reserves discovered in the future as well. Rare earth mining impacts local ecology. Its separation and smelting require a lot of chemicals and the whole process is highly polluting to the environment. Therefore, for a long time, Western companies didn't mind importing rare earth from China, making it the world's largest exporter of rare earth. Starting in the 1990s, through cheap labor and low environmental standards, China was able to bring down the cost of rare earth mining and refining, exporting rare earth at a dirt cheap price. Such a dumping model of export has defeated its competing producers in the West. At the same time, the Chinese government helped establish five well-funded national rare earth laboratories. By 2021, China holds more patents for rare earth technologies than the US and the rest of the world combined. By 2020, China controlled 54% of global rare earth mining capacity and 85% of rare earth refining capacity. It's the only country that has a full industrial chain of rare earth and has virtually dominated certain segments of this chain. More than 80% of the US and 95% of the EU's rare earth are imported from China. In late 2021, China Rare Earth Group Limited, a state-owned conglomerate, was established, signaling the Communist Party's intention to control the global supply of rare earth. China Rare Earth Group is headquartered in the best and largest rare earth mining area in southern China. This enterprise combines research, production, and mining sources together. It has created a new landscape of one rare earth group in Jiangxi province in southern China and one in Inner Mongolia in the north, breaking the previous coexistence of six rare earth groups in China. According to the Chinese media, the establishment of this new company will further increase China's bargaining power in the global market for rare earth resources. The Wall Street Journal analyzed the matter by saying that China could have pricing power if it had a market share of more than 50%. In other words, the goal of the CCP's merger and restructuring strategy is to increase Beijing's pricing power over global rare earth and expand its influence in the field. It's also to gain bargaining chips to restrain the US or to warn countries aligning with it. For example, countries with advanced technology depend on China's rare earth. When China is sanctioned by the US and others in the area of advanced technology, will Beijing use rare earth as a bargaining chip to obtain such key technologies? The countries that have the technology may not necessarily give the most advanced technology to the CCP, but it could give them the technology that was available three or five years ago in exchange, which would be profitable for both sides. This is most likely one of the CCP's intentions. However, to achieve these goals, Beijing faces a series of major challenges. In 2010, when the Senkaku Islands or Daiyu Islands dispute arose between China and Japan, China used its rare earth weapon for the first time. It suspended the export of rare earth to Japan for two months. This sent shockwaves through the international community with countries like the US suddenly realizing that they were heavily dependent on China for the supply of a critical product. The Japanese technology industry would be paralyzed as a whole if it didn't find new sources of rare earth. At that time, the Japanese approached the largest rare earth producer in Australia, invested at a very low interest rate, and established a China-free supply chain. In March 2012, the US, Japan, and the European Union jointly sued China at the World Trade Organization, or WTO, claiming its export quotas and tariffs on three raw materials were inconsistent with WTO rules and its own WTO accession commitments. 
China ended up losing the case. In the 10 years since then, a rare earth supply chain, independent of China, which the US and its allies have worked hard to create, has taken shape. America's largest water, earth, and biological science and civilian mapping agency, the U.S. Geological Survey, reported in 2020 that rare earth is now mined in nearly 20 countries around the world. In recent years, there has emerged a worldwide rare earth prospecting fever driven by the clean energy economy. New rare earth deposits have been discovered from Europe and South America to Asia and Africa, and many are being mined. Take, for example, the Round Top Rare Earth Project being developed in the U.S. in Texas. This giant rare earth mine is believed to have enough deposits to supply Americans for 130 years. According to the Voice of America, an Australian company called American Rare Earths recently revealed that it had secured $6.1 million U.S. dollars in capital and has been granted exploration licenses for two rare earth mines located in two U.S. states. One of these mines, located in Arizona, has the potential to become the largest rare earth mine in the U.S. Even more valuable is that the thorium and uranium contained in the mine are extremely low in radioactive elements. Legal restrictions on radioactive elements are considered to be the most direct cause of the U.S. ceding rare earth dominance to China in the 1980s. Moreover, U.S. authorities, that is, the U.S. Department of Defense and the Department of Energy, especially during the Trump presidency, have started to fund basic research, processing, and production of rare earth. The U.S. has shaken up the rare earth separation sector, which China once practically monopolized. Linus of Australia, which also benefited from the Pentagon, has become the most successful supplier of rare earth smelting and separation products. It transports ore mined in Mount Weld, Western Australia, to the lamp plant in Kuantan, Malaysia, for smelting and separation. In its latest earnings report, Linus announced that its total production had reached more than 15,000 tons. Shares of the company have risen about sevenfold in two years. In November 2021, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy, said that a new rare earth metatechnology they developed with scientists at the Idaho National Laboratory is a game changer in terms of its ability to separate rare earth cost effectively. This will benefit American manufacturers and it has been licensed to an American organic chemical manufacturer. U.S. Geological Survey data shows that American imports of refined rare earth products have been declining each year in recent years, from a total of 696 million in 2011 to 110 million in 2021. Reuters reported in August 2021 that the European Union was working on a proposal to support local manufacturers to accelerate the production of special rare earth magnets that are critical to electric vehicle manufacturing in Europe in order to compete with Chinese rivals. However, analysts point out that the efforts of the US and its allies are generally too slow and that they are still far behind China in terms of the industrial scale. For Beijing, there are other challenges in the war on rare earth. For instance, it's difficult to track the flow of rare earth, which makes it challenging for the CCP to achieve precision in its sanction against other countries since it can't control the reselling of rare earth. The biggest challenge, though, comes from a dilemma created by the regime itself. First, China's rare earth resources are rapidly depleting after years of overexploitation. Its share of global production was more than 90% in 2010 and nearly 50% in 2016. By 2020, with 44 million tons of rare earth reserves in China and 120 million tons of proven rare earth reserves worldwide, the ratio had dropped to about 36%. The China Geological Survey published a paper at the end of 2021 titled The Changing Pattern of the World Rare Earth Industry and the Problems Facing the Chinese Rare Earth Industry. The thesis acknowledged that China's advantage in rare earth resources has gradually diminished, with reduced resources and the discovery of new rare earth resources in other countries. In addition, rare earth mining has caused a serious pollution problem in China. The New York Times reported in 2013 that radioactive toxic substances leaking from 20 years of rare earth refining production in northern China have been slowly seeping into the ground, approaching the Yellow River. Guangdong province in southeastern China has also seen corrosive substances such as strong acids from open pit rare earth mining sites flow into the ground, damaging nearby rice paddies and streams. 
Second, although China has earned the title of the world's top rare earth exporter, in reality, it hasn't brought benefits to either its finances or enterprises. The vicious competition within the Chinese rare earth industry and the frenzied smuggling of rare earth resources have made it possible to export rare earth resources cheaply and even at a loss for decades. In 2012, China's State Council Information Office released a document titled China's Rare Earth Situation and Policy, stating that the amount of rare earth imported from China through foreign customs statistics was compared with the export statistics of Chinese customs. The comparison shows China's rare earth smuggling volume was 1.2 times higher than the regular export volume in 2011. North China rare earth used to be the largest supplier of rare earth products in China and even the world. In the first three quarters of 2016, its net profit was less than 5.5 million US dollars, with a net profit margin of less than 1%. After deducting government subsidies of about 8.87 million US dollars, it was actually at a loss. In order to reverse the situation of rare earth being exported cheaply, the Chinese government has tried to take a series of initiatives, including controlling the total volume of production, adjusting export quotas, and raising export tariffs. Especially after the US-China trade war started, the CCP expected to counteract the US through rare earth quotas and export restrictions. However, the planned economy measures have hurt its own companies in practice. A senior source at the North China Rare Earth Group was quoted in a report in the Financial Times as saying that mining quotas had dealt a severe blow to producers' business profits and created instability in the supply of rare earth. For example, a report released in 2019 by a chamber of commerce in Baotou, Inner Mongolia province, showed that a local magnet factory was operating at less than 50% of capacity, partly because the state restricted rare earth production and the company couldn't obtain enough rare earth. Third, China's imports of rare earth have increased dramatically in recent years, and import prices are much higher than export prices. China is the world's largest rare earth mining country and exporter. Starting in 2018, China has also become the world's largest importer of rare earth. As reported by Chinese media, from January to October 2021, China imported over 58,000 tons of rare earth ore, which was close to 60% of global rare earth consumption. The reason is that China has been rapidly developing motors, batteries, catalysts, and various emerging materials that are widely used in emerging industries such as solar power generation, wind power generation, new energy vehicles, etc. These products are all large consumers of rare earth. The Financial Times reported that U.S. rare earth miner Mountain Pass and suppliers from Myanmar accounted for 38% and 30% of China's rare earth imports in 2019, respectively. A source in China's rare earth industry told reporters that because China lacks high-end technology, it can't produce high-value-added rare earth and can only roughly process them. As a result, the price of processed rare earth imported from other countries is high. He explained it with an analogy. If you sell rare earth directly at 1 yuan per ton, you may be able to sell it for 3 to 5 yuan after rough processing. After selling to Japan and the US, by the time they sell back to China, a ton of rare earth refined products may reach 800 to 1000 yuan. That is, China now needs to import a lot of rare earth from the US and other countries to maintain the industrial chain. The technology to highly process rare earth is still in the hands of the US and Japan. If the CCP decides to play the rare earth card, it must be prepared to withstand countermeasures from the US. From this analysis, it's clear that the planned economy to a certain extent has left China's rare earth enterprises and markets in chaos. However, the CCP still believes in the socialist and communist economic model and believes that state-owned enterprises or party-owned enterprises can help turn their fortunes around. China Rare Earth Group Limited is the latest state-owned conglomerate created by the CCP. Since 2021, Beijing has built up similar giants like China Sinochem Holdings, China Satellite Network Group, China Electric Equipment Group, and China Logistics Group. Up to now, China's state-owned capital has accounted for over 80% of the total in military industry, power grids, petroleum and petrochemicals, transportation, telecommunications, coal, and other enterprises. It makes people wonder if the party is overconfident in communist economics, or it can no longer find other ways out of its predicament.